Are you living the Delaware Beach lifestyle? You can't live at the beach and do nothing. This up and coming year round area has lots to offer. Find out where to eat, play, and serve. Living the ultimate dream. Hey, welcome to the 302 Lifestyle Beach Podcast. Uh, you've got Dylan Ewing as your host, and we have Andrea Jensen with Cash Flow CFO. Uh, just a little info uh, Andrea and her team have really uh, been such a foundation for our business. Uh, after nine years in business, you know, <laughs> it wasn't until a couple years ago we started having um, a, a complete understanding of the financial aspect of it. You know, a lot of times as an entrepreneur or a business owner, you start, um, you, you dive head first into a lot of your projects and a lot of your uh, big ideas, which is one of the great things about being a business owner. But sometimes uh, that comes with a little bit of lack of understanding of some of the really important stuff. And you don't really notice it until you start growing and some of these foundational pieces need a uh, better handle. So Andrea, uh, you are just amazing. She's a wife, mother, soccer player, passionate volunteer. Uh, you help kids with cancer, holy cow, and um, thrive and uh, shelter dogs to find their forever homes. That's what I'm <laughs> curious about too. And in the midst of that, you are helping business owners uh, understand their numbers and their business. And this all started from when you were younger. Mm -hmm. So Andrea, please dive in, tell us how you got involved with all this and what you do now. Awesome. Well, thanks. First of all, thank you for having me on today. I'm excited to chat with you and share some of this knowledge to other business owners who might be in um, a similar spot to where you were when we first started working together. Um, so for me, entrepreneurship has been in my family, both my parents, um, you know, owned their own businesses. My dad was in the hospitality industry. So I really learned firsthand how to take care of people and, and really make them feel, um, welcome. And, uh, you know, it, it really built some solid foundations for, um, what it means to serve other people and, uh, you know, learning that at such an early age, really helped create, um, you know, my outlook on how we treat our clients today. Mm -hmm. And even though we're not in the hospitality industry, we're in the finance industry, um, we've been able to pull little threads of that into our business. And, and I think that's one of the things that sets us apart. Um, and I'll talk more about that. But let me first kind of take you back a little bit to how <laughs> I ended up being an accountant, first of yes. all. Um, so I was playing uh, college soccer and I had to pick a degree. All I wanted to do was play ball. I was like, yeah, I'm here. I got to get an education. Cool. That's the bonus. Right. And so I started taking business classes because that's what I, you know, was surrounded with growing up. So I figured that's a, a, a clear path for me to take. And you have to take all of these, um, you know, a lot of the different first level of all the different business um, subjects. So I started taking accounting classes and I got an A in my first one. I was like, Ooh, I didn't have to study <laughs> too hard for that. That's pretty cool. So I'll take another one. <laughs> and so I took the second level, then the third level, and I kept acing these classes. Wow. And so one day my professor pulled me aside and he said, you know, this isn't something that just natural comes natural to people. <laughs> yeah. And I said, really? It's not <laughs> like, I thought everybody did this. Yeah, and so, you know, come to find out that's just kind of how my brain was wired and um, I enjoyed it and it came, you know, easy to me. And so that's kind of how I started down this path of the accounting slash finance world. Um, so fast forward, I graduated. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm one of those unique unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> so fast forward, um, you know, finished college, first job out the gate, I went to work for a venture capital company and um, worked there, was exposed to so much cool stuff with, um, you know, entrepreneurs and getting funding for their businesses and seeing all of the deals and how the transactions came about and things like that. So I was definitely bit by the bug after working there. And I was like, yeah, this, this business thing is, is definitely for me. And I love it uh, because, you know, really as business owners, it's, it's all one big puzzle 
that we're trying to figure out, right? Mm. So you've got the people, the marketing, the sales, the finances, and there's so many moving pieces. And so our job is to kind of put it all together so that it runs smooth and we're profitable. So, yeah. So I really like that. Hopefully. (laughs) (laughs) That's the end goal for sure. Um, And so, uh, you know, I, I worked in corporate for a while and uh, moved up the the ranks and um, I had my first daughter. She's 12 now, but when she was born, she was born with cancer. And uh, so that's kind of how the, my, my, work with, with cancer foundations for pediatric cancer, um, came about, oh. but she, uh, you know, so we went through a couple years of some really tough times for her and we were able to, um, thankfully everything worked out and she's happy and thriving now, but it really opened my eyes to, okay, I'm, I'm in this corporate job where I'm required to sit at this desk from this time to this time. And I do the same thing over and over and over again. And I said, I know there's more out there. Right. So it was great experience and I really um, was involved in some really high level um, accounting and finance stuff. So I got to see some really cool things and be a part of it. And then I stepped back and said, you know, I want to take this information to small businesses because it's really the small businesses that are creating change in the world and they're, they're finding mm. problems and they're creating solutions. And, you know, it allows them to, solve something that will help other people at the same time, create personal wealth for them and their family. And so for me, I'm like, yeah, that's where I need to be. Wow. So it sounds like you discovered your why uh, through this process of realizing what's important in life. And well, it's really interesting. I think a lot of people um, that I talk to and myself included, it kind of takes that uh, getting knocked down a peg or kind of taking a step back and, you know, unfortunately, sometimes it's something tragic or something, you know, really like shakes you and say, oh, my gosh, like there's actually a lot more important things here. Uh, let me kind of get out of my routine and find something that I'm passionate about. And that's when you uh, realize that, you know, small businesses are the backbone of every community, really yeah. they provide uh, employment and jobs. And then if the business owners aren't happy, no one's happy in the business. So, if, and I think a lot of that is money and money is like one of the biggest stressors of marriages and couples and businesses and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So you being so talented with that, you're able to offer that type of peace for, and it flourishes all throughout their life. Like I know with us, uh, wow, we <laughs> sleep a lot better at night knowing our numbers. So, yeah. oh, so awesome. So now, uh, kind of walk us through what's going on now. What, uh, what can people expect? And um, I can go on and on about what you've done for us, but um, let's plug in people how they can reach you. But before that, what what do you do now? Yeah. So what we do now is we support small businesses. So anywhere between um, our sweet spot is about a million and up in revenue. That's really where we can come in and support the business as they're making that transition. Cause that's a really from six to seven figures is a really big deal. And there's a lot of things that you'll see as you pressure test your uh, systems and processes, that's where you find things that break, right? Cause it's the volume Mm -hmm. that you were able to do down here with this platform or this, um, foundation, when you get up to the next level, some things have to change. And a lot of times what has to change is your financial team is one of those big pieces that you need Mm -hmm. to up level because the team that got you here is not the team that's going to get you up here. And so you need a different skill set and a different um, level of experience and expertise and kind of saying, here's what's going to happen next. Don't worry, we got you. Here's how to plan Mm -hmm. and be prepared for it. So, um, you know, that, that lends to a lot of people, you know, they were a fractional CFO company. We offer accounting solutions and tax solutions also. So a lot of people say, what's a CFO? You know, if I'm a business owner, I hear CFO, but I think, oh, that's only for big corporations, right? You don't think that it would be something that your business could benefit from or even afford. Mm -hmm. And so that was a big, um, hole in the market that we identified is we were just doing the accounting and the tax. And we said, but wait, these people, these business owners, they need more 
that next level advice and strategy. And so we said, okay, we're going to service that. And so by doing that, you know, um, I give the example, Dylan, a lot of times that if you're a business owner and you're driving down the road in your car, imagine that your bookkeeper and your tax preparer are sitting in the back seat. Yeah. They're looking out the rear, the back window of the car and they're looking at what happened in the past, right? So they're reporting on where you went, what you did, how much you spent. Okay. That's their job. Then sitting in the front seat next to you, the business owner is your CFO. And they're looking out the front windshield telling you, here's what's coming up. Here's how to plan and here's how to be prepared. So you need everybody in the car, right? Cause that, mm-hmm. you know, makes up the whole, the whole picture, but each of them have a very distinct skill set, and they're going to give you very different advice. So your tax preparer, they're going to tell you how to save money on taxes. They're not going to tell you how to manage and run your business like a CFO is. And your bookkeeper, their skill set, you know, they're just going to record transactions and create those financial statements for you, make sure that everything matches what's, you know, the actual cash that left the business is recorded properly and that your financials are complete and accurate. Mm -hmm. And so that's where a lot of business owners get tripped up because they think those two positions in the backseat are supposed to help them look forward. And truly they're not. See, Honestly, that's, that's what uh, I believe for so long. And um, I hear it all the time from other business owners in the area and just anywhere I meet really, it's like, Oh, my bookkeeper, he, uh, they're helping me with my taxes or, um, it could be a Marriott of, you know, you know, when I hire somebody to help me with my QuickBooks or something, I think, oh, well, they should know how to do my budget and how to prepare for taxes and they should know what categories and, and even if they don't, I'll ask them to do it because I think, well, naturally they should know numbers. So they know all this other stuff and not even realizing, uh, the differences and how there's a future, there's a past and there's a present. And each one of these pieces uh, has very different roles. So why, sh- okay, if I'm a business owner and I have a bookkeeper, uh, what, why is it so important that somebody else is managing or helping uh, see these different views? Yeah, so one of the, the main things that that CFO is going to do for you is help you create those schedules. We call them financial anchors that are going to help you reach your financial goals. So when we first start with a client, we identify what are your one year, three year, five year financial goals. And then we say, okay, let's now look at where we're at right now. And so what we do is we create that roadmap for you to say, here's where we're at and here's where you want to go. So this is what needs to happen in between. And what needs to happen in between is mapped out on your uh, cash flow forecast your budget, your staff utilization analysis, your job costing, um, all of those things, your key performance indicators, those are going to tell you if you're on track to hit those one year, three year, five year financial goals. Mm -hmm. And so the skill set of a bookkeeper is not one that can create those those schedules for you, nor have the future, you know, of like looking at saying, okay, If you tell me you want to have a million dollars in revenue next year, awesome. What's your sales conversion rate? Mm -hmm. How many leads do you need to get to? How are you spending your marketing um, budget? And so all of those things are the little pieces that we look at and we analyze and we say, okay, if you want to do this, then this is what needs to happen. And we call it our predictable profit method. And so we're able to say, if you tell me you want a million dollars, I'll tell you exactly what you need to do and to get there. And all the leading indicators will measure along the way and we'll report back to you. You're on track or you're not. Here's what you need to do to fix, uh, to get back on track. So uh, super helpful. A lot of business owners don't even know that that help exists. Um, And so I think that's... (laughs) That's the first thing is to say, hey, we have this service. This is how we can help you. Um, And then really just, you know, getting getting the word out there is really important. Yeah, it's funny. I think as a as a business owner, well, me personally and a lot of business owners I know they or us or or we you are, too. uh, We're very good at uh, like kind of visioning, you know, visioning like what we want done and how we can help people and all these things. And 
uh, implementing or delegating. But the one piece, especially if you're starting from zero and going up, or you're starting at a very low rate and you're trying to grow, uh, that one piece of financials is something that we usually take on ourselves because, well, I don't have the money right now, or we're just growing. It's okay. I can manage it. And as long as you're doing your, your business well, you will grow. And so naturally, it, things start getting to a point where, okay, now I'm trying to figure out my marketing. I'm trying to figure out this. I'm trying to hire all these different people. I'm trying to manage employees. And before you know it, like you're so overwhelmed. And now it's an ego thing where, okay, well, I should know my numbers. And then, so instead of asking for help or, you know, reaching out, we start Googling, right? And then it's just an overwhelming amount of work. So we just turn to uh, one person, hey, you, you do this then, or you just dump stuff on somebody expecting to give them money and they just do it. Um, so some, a service like you, it's so nice that uh, now we can breathe and somebody can say, okay, look. Uh, we're not just a bookkeeper. We're not just this. We can actually um, give you real advice and real numbers and real uh, goals and tracking and, you know, go over all that stuff and have somebody to talk through and not be scared so we can concentrate on other things in the business. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Wow, super good. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the thing that we say to businesses, the very first thing a business owner should do when they start off is hire a bookkeeper even if they're using them for two hours a month, you know, okay. that's super affordable, right? Do that because the sooner you get your numbers on in track, uh, or excuse me, on track and, and counted everything, mm -hmm. you need to know what's coming in, what's going out. Am I profitable? You know, a lot of business owners, they enjoy what they do, the doing of mm -hmm. what they do. And they don't necessarily have the mindset of I'm in this to make a profit, and so they don't bring in that bookkeeper because they kind of don't want to know in the beginning, you know, and yeah, that's true. You know, to be honest. <laughs> I don't even want to know. I just, <laughs> yeah. I can eat. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's okay too. Cause there's, I think there's definitely two different types of businesses out there. There's the, um, the business owner that wants to be doing what they're doing and it's just a lifestyle. They just need to make enough money to not go work for someone else. And yeah. that's totally fine. That's one type of business. Then the other type of business is the business owner who is building this as an asset. Hmm. The asset that's going to give you money to put aside for retirement, that's going to pay for your kids' college education, that's going to pay for an aging parent, that's going hmm. to allow you to you know, live a nice lifestyle, be able to take a few vacations and do the things that you want to do. So it's really, it's really important to get clear in the beginning. Am I doing this just to not work for someone else and I just want to make enough money doing what I'm doing? Or am I building an asset? And if you're building an asset, then you look at your business entirely different. Yeah. Um, and you need to have the right team in place to help you um, protect that asset, build it the right way with the solid foundation so that if in, you know, down the road, one of your goals is to sell it, um, to, you know, pay for your retirement, then you need to make sure that asset is, has value mm -hmm. and you've got systems and processes and all of your engines, you know, the pillars of your, your finance, your sales, your marketing, your delivery, they're all dialed in. And then that asset will be worth a lot more money. Yeah. And especially if you're trying to have a real valuation of your business, how are you going to do that if you just hand somebody a box of receipts and say, you know, here's all, I don't even know. You know? Right, we're profitable, I swear. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, okay, so before we get uh, too deep into this, so if this is sounding like something you guys are interested in, I know there's so many business owners uh, checking this out. Uh, this uh, organization and your team and everyone on your team is just so nice and helpful and uh, communicative. And uh, if you guys are trying to connect with these guys, it's ca the cash flow CFO.com slash tax prep. And tell me a little bit about that. Cause I noticed the tail on that. Um, what are they getting when they go there? Well, we put together a little special offer for, um, for your, your audience and it's tax time. Yeah. And this is actually good anytime. So if you're watching this later, this is still <laughs> really, really valuable because 
you know, that's the the thing about running a business, the tax thing, it just happens all the time, right? (laughs) You can't get away from it. So it's better to be prepared, Mm -hmm. be proactive, um, and, you know, not get a surprise when it comes time to file your taxes. So we put together some uh, tips for you to uh, help you get organized and um, be successful for the next tax time. So you can go, um, you can check out our website at thecashflowcfo.com and just look around. There's also lots of good stuff for you there. Or you can add that extension on and get our um, our free guide. All right, love it, guys. Uh, I don't even know how many good things I can say about this. Um, it just has offered such a relief. Um, just to know that somebody knows what they're actually doing too. I mean, I've gone through so many people hired and fired and let go and people don't show up or I go to do my taxes or turn in my information and all of a sudden my numbers are all wrong. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on? Uh, but you guys really take the time to go through. And I think one of the illusions of a business owner like myself was that, uh, well, even though everything's a mess and it's taken you know eight, nine years to create this giant mess, uh, everything's just, I should just hand it to you. And within a week, everything will be figured out. And, um, but you know, know that it's going to take a couple months. I mean, not like a tremendous amount of time, but to go back and forth, uh, make sure you go line by line really. And just checking things, categorizing things properly. And then eventually that leads to organization and, um, knowing your goals. Well, I think the goals are first, you said, but knowing, uh, where all those pieces fit. Oh, I love it. I just love feeling like I actually know <laughs> how everything's running and structuring and uh, it's perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. And one of the things that is, you know, one of our, our core values is education. So we don't want to necessarily just do the work for you. We want to show you here's what we're doing and why it matters so that you as a business owner are getting that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, It's going to make you better in all the different areas of your business. Because as you know, money touches everything in your business. Every decision you make, there's a money um, implication of it. And so we really, you know, like every month when we send you your financials, we're like, schedule a call. Let's talk about this. Let's go through it together. (laughs) You know, we want to have that partnership where we're really – we're really open and, and ask questions. You know, it's super important for business owners when you don't know something, don't yeah. feel dumb about it. Ask questions. Like that's why you hire professionals, right? So they can impart their wisdom with you. Yeah. Uh, so that's something, a, a tip that I'll give to all the, the listeners out there is, is get curious about your numbers because mm-hmm. it's such you know, it's probably one of the most important parts of your business. Don't be scared of it. Don't be scared of it. Yeah. And if you're, if you're with a, a service, that makes you feel dumb for asking mm-hmm. questions. That's a good point. Don't be there. There's lots of other places where they'll teach you and answer your questions and give you that financial empowerment. Now, I don't know if this is something uh, you're kind of doing or want to talk about, but I know it's not just numbers. So you guys have kind of taken off a huge chunk of stress off of our plates. Um, so what are the things? Uh, so you have different tiers too, I think, of levels of service you can offer. Yeah. Um, so- tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, it's really important. So systems and procedures um, around your financial pillar in your business are so important because you want to know if this happens, this is going to happen. If this happens, this is going to happen. And it's kind of one of those where business owners um, don't, they're, they're moving so fast that they often don't have SOPs written for their financial, um, how things happen. And how SOP things- is... A standard operating procedure. <laughs> yes. My favorite things. I'm so, I love it. Yeah, we have an SOP for everything in our business. And that's what makes me sleep better at night because I know that my team is going to show up and represent the brand, me, in a way that we've already mapped out because they've got that SOP on how they should be handling each thing mm. that happens in the business. And all of your listeners should do the same thing. So, how are you collecting money from your clients? How are you invoicing them? How are you following up on past due invoices? How are you handling billing questions? How are you recording, you know, different types of transactions in your financial statements? Um, you know, all of the things that happen with you go out and you service the client and you do a great job. But then if you do a poor job on the collecting the money or um, making it easy for your clients to pay you, 
those are things that will make the delivery look poor also. So you want to make sure that it's a a holistic thing that you're doing. So if I come out and perform a service for you, I want to make sure that you say, Oh, it was awesome. And how do I pay? And it's easy. And you know, a smooth transaction all the way from start to finish. Yeah. And you guys really took care of all that stuff. So I think we would just get on a call in the beginning was more frequently. And uh, it was us asking questions and your company asking questions. And then it turned into, okay, we don't, we got this like, and it, you guys, uh, Dolores and the other, uh, gals just really kind of laid out all the SOPs, but then it turned into something where it was kind of like a, I don't even know what goes on anymore. Everything is just done. And, uh, it's so nice to uh, know that I can trust people and, um, uh, yeah, perfect. Love it. So Andrea, all this good greatness, what is the secret from running a business and having a family and all the good things that you do? Uh, Tell us, do you have any advice for families and stuff moving from the big city chaos to serving community and running a family and business? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I would say, you know, the first thing is really just pour your heart into it. Um, you know, all of our clients, you know, I, I love them all, honestly, and, and they're all people that I would, you know, love to just go out and have a glass of wine with, you know, we don't <laughs> yeah. work with people that, uh, you know, life's too short to have clients that are grouchy and, and mm. make life complicated for everybody. So I would say first things first is like really lead with your heart. And then the second is be really organized. So, you know, I have husband, he has a business, I have kids, I have, you know, all the things. And then I have a team of 12. And everybody's got their own little things in their lives, right? So there's a lot of moving pieces. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we we create um, organization and a structure so that 90% of the time things go like they're supposed to. And there's always going to be things in life that don't go as planned. Mm -hmm. But if if for the most of the time, you've got something in place to handle that, it's easy to just ride, you know, the wave of the other 10% and not get super stressed out over it. Yeah. So it sounds like uh, if you expect that nothing's going to go wrong and everyone's going to be perfect and everyone in uh, your employees or people, people in your life, relationships, uh, kids or anything, that if you expect that they're going to be just like you and you're, and even you're never going to make mistakes, uh, but allowing that room for things to go wrong. And a lot of times when we see something go wrong in our personal life or business, it allows us to see what we should do to not have that happen again. So I almost get excited when something goes wrong because it allows me to take the time to make sure that we set up a system for that to not happen again. But expecting people aren't going to be perfect. They're going to make mistakes and uh, it's going to be okay. <laughs> Yeah. And the other thing is just to really make sure that you're surrounding yourself with good, good people. Oh, uh, I love that too. Because my team, they are amazing human beings and they're whip smart. And I know that I can lean on them when I need it. And they can also, you know, raise their hand and be like, this doesn't feel right. Something's wrong with either this process or this, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And I, as the leader of the company go, okay, well, what do you think we should do to fix it? And then that allows them to really take ownership of things and it creates more of a, uh, a team led and run company, which really as the business owner takes a lot of the stress off of me because I don't feel like I need to fix everything. Um, I hire smart people and I let them do what I hired them for. And I don't get too involved, you know, like I don't get in their way is probably a good way of saying it. Yeah. And I I heard you mention uh, core values and, Anytime I hear a company say they have core values, I love them because, <laughs> because I know that they realize that, you know, they've took the time to discover their core values. And now you like for us, anyways, we run our business with core values. So now it takes away the headache of worrying about, you know, stress if, if a, a customer or employee or whatever it is just isn't right and they're violating core values. It's an easy decision now. And then trusting the people that you have around you. Uh, is huge. And if you hire them off of core values or bring people around you, even in your personal life, off of those core values that you have or the business is run by, um, it makes life so much easier because you won't feel right. And you're like, 
wait a minute, this is going against a core value. Uh, we're not a good fit and not be mad or upset or, you know, vindictive over it. It's, it's a, uh, you know what? We're just not a good fit. I have these core values. You have yours. <laughs> Let's part ways and we'll be happy. Uh, I love that. I love it. Yeah. So yeah. what, uh, I usually ask questions about 302 here, but since you're not here, uh, let's just say, uh, what's your favorite place to eat? <laughs> what's your favorite my, type of food? <laughs> my favorite. I think I'm actually going to make this for my, my, uh, daughter's birthday party tomorrow, but I'm going to make a braised short rib dinner. Ooh, so, I haven't yeah. had a braised short rib in so long. That's, that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. Um, Let's see, skipping all this stuff here. Okay, we went over the living with the family and organized. So uh, if you guys, I'm running out of stuff to talk about with um, uh, 302 here. But if you are looking to uh, get a hold of these guys, again, go to the uh, cashflowcfo.com. Uh, I'm going to put all the links down below so you guys can reach them. It has revolutionized our business and our life. And uh, we're going to go for the lightning round. You ready? Ready. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best book, tool, or software or video? And why is it so great? Uh, teamwork. Teamwork is our, our uh, task management software where we create tasks, assign them to the team members. They can log their time. They can make notes. They can attach files. Uh, we're a completely virtual company. And so that is the hub um, of our company and we couldn't oh. do what we do without it. Oh, so it's not teamwork, teamwork. It's teamwork, it's the, the software. software teamwork. Yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> teamwork software. Yes. Oh, I love it. So it's yeah. a great way to get organized. Okay. Absolutely. What is the biggest myth business owners need to know? And why is that? What's the truth about it? Uh, the biggest myth to me is that they think they have to be good at all the different parts of running a business. Hmm. And the truth is you don't have to know everything in detail. You have to hire the right people for those roles and know how to, you know, what are, what's the um, outcome that you expect and have a way to measure that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> All right. And what is the biggest mistake that you've made in business? Ah, the biggest mistake that I've made is around marketing, uh, because mm. clearly marketing is not my specialty, right? I'm a numbers girl. So marketing is just really understanding that I am either building an asset and I'm investing money, my marketing budget into that. So is that, um, you know, a lead opt in? Is that a, a funnel? Is that, you know, a an, an, an digital course that I'm training, you know, selling is it so I'm either building an asset, or I'm buying a lead. And what happens with that right. lead when I buy it, having a system so that I'm not just wasting my money, I bring in a lead, I nurture it, is it the right fit? If so, I continue the conversation. If not, I, you know, will find a place for them where I can continue to provide value for them. But I realized that not every lead is a right fit for me to have as a client. So mm. it's all around marketing, I'm still learning as I go. But yeah, yeah, I love it. And I think uh, important piece for us was when we learned that uh, we don't go ask uh, for the date right away or ask for marriage right away. It's, <laughs> right. you know, uh, offer some real value and some and, uh, uh, you know, let people get to know you more and uh your business before you say hey once you sign up for our services it's here let me give something to the community and to the people and to the customer beforehand and then naturally uh those leads or those um uh, people that have raised their hand and said oh i like i like your style i like your business i like this information and instead of going after a sale or something it's well let me give you more let me let me this is so much for you. I need you to know that it's, uh, it's going to make your life better. And in turn, they want to sign up. Yeah. Really cool. Absolutely. One thing I forgot to mention too, Dylan, is we have a Facebook group that business owners can pop in and we just pour into them with all kinds of uh, value. So Ooh, can, I don't think I'm on there. I'm no. Oh, I'm yeah. um, go to our, our, um, the cashflowcfo.com and there's a button you can click to join our Facebook group. 
All right, cool. I'm going to do that and we'll put that link down below too. Uh, so if you guys are just looking for more information or you're kind of dancing around the idea of something like this, uh, that sounds like a great place to, to go to. Yes. All right, Andrea, what is one question I should have asked and what's your answer? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Um, let's say the one question is, is what's holding business owners back from Ooh. growth? Let's talk about that. And I think the answer is they're trying to do it alone. They're trying to do too many things alone instead of bringing in um, a team that will support them to reach their goals. Um, and we see that a lot when business owners have tried to do their own books or tried to, um, you know, they've, they've achieved all of this growth and they don't have the financial pillar in their business built out like they should. And so it's causing them sleepless nights. And it's really because it's hindering their growth from going any higher and it's because they're trying to figure it out themselves instead mm. of bringing in the right team. So baby steps, uh, from what I've heard, then if you're relatively small, uh, of course, a bookkeeper just to get at least, you know, some organization is somebody that's only focused on that, looking at that. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the next step would be if you're a little bit bigger or you have some bigger goals. Uh, it sounds like the first step would be join your Facebook group, go on your website, and maybe just talk to somebody about uh, different options for, and I think it's important for you guys to see where the goals and stuff are at first and uh, the numbers first and then decide, okay, I think this would be best. So yeah, absolutely. And if you steps. are, if you're at seven figures or above and you don't have a team like this, like we're talking about what we do for you guys and, and what's uh, available, I think that is going to be the catalyst for you hitting that next uh, level yeah. in your business is to, to look at bringing in a team like that for your financial okay. division. Yeah. Wow. This is really great. We're going to have to have you on again soon once we have hundreds of uh, people on here. But uh, I can't wait to put this down below and give some value to our community and uh, let everyone see your awesomeness. Aw, thank you. Andrea, thank you for being on and taking your Saturday to uh, join us. You're very welcome. It was my pleasure. And guys, if you want to live the 302 lifestyle, if you're a business owner or you are trying to manage anything like this, uh, your finances are a huge part of your life. And uh, this is a great way to be able to live a lifestyle that you want. So I encourage you guys to check it out. In the meantime, thank you, Andrea. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wish you could spend more time having fun and less time with chores? Go to 302beachtalk.com to get $20 off a home cleaning. You'll be entered to win a completely free cleaning. Eat, play, serve. Sponsored by That Guy with a Broom.